Hi everyone, it's Linda. I hope everybody's doing good this week. It's hard to believe we're four weeks away. Um, for our discussion this week, of course, we know that we're talking about um, disparities. So, in the United States, the issue of uninsured citizens is not just a statistic. It's a crisis with significant implications for the economy and the healthcare system. Um, this, the disparities in access to health care services among uninsured individuals are not just numbers. They are real people suffering. Um, this crisis can be far-reaching, and it can affect um, public health and financial stability. When a large portion of the population lacks health insurance coverage, it can lead to delayed medical treatment, increased emergency room visits, and higher health care costs. This burden often falls on hospitals and taxpayers, creating a strain on resources and rising health care expenses for everyone. As I was reviewing the KFF Health System Tracker, the data on uninsured individuals stood out. In 2022, the National Health In Interview Service from the CDC reported that one in four people either delay or choose not to opt for health care coverage. The number of uninsured non-elderly people was 25.6 million, and that was a decrease of 1 million from 2016. This, the pandemic was the sole factor that attributed to the de de decrease with Medicaid registration increasing during the pandemic by 30%. To put this into perspective locally, 7.4% of the population in West Virginia is uninsured. <clears throat> Community health centers play a crucial role in reducing disparities in healthcare delivery. They provide accessible and affordable care to underserved populations, ensuring everyone can access quality health care regardless of socio socioeconomic status. These centers offer a wide range of services, including primary care, preventative care, mental health services, and chronic disease management. They are a power powerful example of collective action and the potential for positive change in our healthcare system. Another example is a student-run free clinic in Tampa, Florida, as discussed by Purbish and his research group. Many colleges are encouraging medical students to develop clinics to provide needed health care to the underprivileged. Through community outreach programs, health education initiatives, and culturally competent care, community health centers and student-run clinics address the unique needs of diverse populations and work towards eliminating barriers to health care. By promoting early detection and intervention, these centers help prevent disease and improve overall health outcomes. For some reason, I always have something at work that relates to our topic for the week. Last week, we had a patient who is employed full-time but does not have health care coverage. Based on a 2023 research article by Mendoza, his employer is one of the 96% with less than 50 employees and is not required to provide health insurance. This particular man was admitted for acute renal failure, but he actually had chronic renal failure and required dialysis. A 2020 publication Medicaid fraud payments and benefits defined a spend down as a process that allows individuals to qualify for Medicaid coverage even if their income and assets exceed the usual limits. This is particularly important for individuals with high medical expenses. The spend down process allows individuals to spend down their excess income on medical bills. They can qualify for coverage. This gentleman was $38 over the limit, so he didn't qualify for Medicaid. He had a 90-day 
entitlement period before he was eligible for Medicare based on the end-stage renal. He medically needed dialysis three times a week. The dialysis centers originally would not accept him unless he paid three months up front, which totaled about $25,000. The good news is we were able to arrange for this gentleman to be dialyzed, and he was discharged and went home. Having worked in end-stage in stage renal for over 20 years, I've seen this situation far too often. The system, in my view, is fundamentally flawed. Um, without exception, this patient would have been forced to stay in the hospital for 90 days to receive the necessary treatments before he went home. I, I don't want to sound like I'm on a soapbox, but this doesn't seem logical. Um, if you guys think anything about this, we can discuss it. We can discuss it more. I think this is where healthcare is today. I hope everybody has a good week. Thanks.